That day, I think I was really tired because as soon as I put my daughter, Nia, to bed, I went to my room and fell asleep right away. Later, I woke up suddenly because I heard Nicholas crying. I checked the time on my phone, and it was 1 o'clock a.m. I felt relieved that I had managed to get a short nap. Feeling exhausted, I got up to comfort Nia. Then, I heard someone shouting, Shut up, be quiet. It took me a moment to figure out where the voice was coming from. I thought it might be my mother-in-law, Jamie, yelling at me from her room. I responded, I'm coming to calm her down now, and opened the door to the living room. There, right in front of me, was Jamie, glaring at Nia in the crib. Then suddenly, she slapped Nia's face and said, That's enough. Shocked, I yelled louder than ever. What are you doing? Jamie seemed surprised for a moment and then panicked, saying, Why didn't you calm her down sooner? This baby is too noisy. I hurried to the crib and picked up Nia to shield her from Jamie. I couldn't believe it. She hit a baby. My name is Candiff and I'm a 28-year-old housewife. I used to work in an office, but now I'm on maternity leave, taking care of the house and our baby. My husband, Miles, and I moved in with my mother-in-law, Jamie, about a year ago. Miles has a demanding job and isn't home much. He was worried about leaving me alone while I was pregnant and felt sorry for Jamie since my father-in-law passed away two years ago. So we decided to live with her. At first, everything was okay, but Jamie's true colors started to show, and honestly, it's been tough. Candy, you're so slow with the housework, and can you cook better food? Jamie kept picking on me every chance she got. When Willis, her husband, was alive, visiting my in-law's house was fine, and I didn't really dislike Jamie. But after Willis passed away and we moved in together, Jamie became incredibly selfish and rude. She'd constantly insult me, saying things like, hurry up, you're useless and slow, even ugly. The last part was just cruel and had nothing to do with chores. Being pregnant, it's natural for me to be slower. But Jamie doesn't seem to understand or care. She just wants to harass me. Since Miles, my husband, is mostly away on business trips and doesn't get home until late, I spend most days with Jamie. I kept hoping things would get better once the baby was born. Surely even Jamie, as tough as she is, would soften up around her grandchild. I clung desperately to that hope. I talked to Miles about it on WhatsApp, trying not to bother him too much at work. He always replies with, I'm sorry, I wish I could be there for you. And he does scold Jamie when they meet. Knowing Miles supports me gives me some comfort, even when I have to endure Jamie's criticism for not doing chores well while pregnant. After safely giving birth to a healthy baby girl, Miles, bless him, managed to arrange time off from work for the birth. He left early and rushed to the hospital. Just before I delivered, as he held our newborn daughter, she's really cute, like an angel. He looked so happy and said, I'm thrilled to have a child with a man I love. I messaged Jamie on WhatsApp to share the news of our baby girl's arrival, hoping she'd visit since we lived together. But Jamie didn't come to the hospital, nor did she reply. I started to worry if she wasn't interested in her granddaughter. Could the harassment continue even now? Just as I feared, the door to my hospital room opened. Candif, how are you feeling? Oh, what precious baby. She's a girl, right? She's going to be beautiful. My sister-in-law, Leela, came to visit. Leela is incredibly kind and cheerful, and she's always been good to me. I've always cherished my relationship with her. Since Leela is already married and has children, I had decided to seek her advice on parenting. What'd you name her? Miles and I decided on Nia. Oh, that's a lovely name. Wait, hasn't mom arrived? No, I reached out to her, but she ignored my message. Ah, I see. She can be difficult sometimes, can't she? Unpredictable and lacking common sense. Yes, indeed. Lilith is direct, and I've always valued that about her. She once told me, If you ever struggle living with mom, don't hesitate to talk to me. That offer was a lifesaver. So whenever things got tough, I would honestly vent to Lila, 
She understood Jamie's challenging personality, so she refrained from scolding Jamie based on what I shared, knowing Jamie would take it out on me. That's why she only intervened when absolutely necessary. At that time, simply being able to share my frustrations was enough to ease my stress. Little did I know, things would become even more challenging after Nicola was born. Jamie, I'm home. When I returned from the hospital with Nicola, Jamie didn't acknowledge her presence at all. Instead, she ordered me to clean right away. I couldn't believe it. It was as if she was pretending Nicola didn't even exist. Despite feeling upset, I placed Nicola in her crib and started cleaning. But within five minutes, Jamie called out angrily, Candy, get over here. Yes, what is it? That baby won't stop crying. Do something about it. I was stunned. Jamie referred to Nicola as that baby, as if she were a nuisance, and ordered me to silence her cries. Jamie continued to mistreat Nicola, demanding that I change her diaper and complaining about the crib being in the way. Each time Jamie yelled, Nicola cried louder in fear, which only angered Jamie more. It created a very tense and uncomfortable atmosphere for Nicola and me. Jamie, her name is Nicola. Could you please call her by her name? Shut up. Don't tell me what to do. You're her mother, so it's your responsibility to take care of her and make sure I'm comfortable. Look, she's crying again. Nicola started crying because Jamie had yelled just after I had put her to bed. I had to interrupt my chores to comfort Nicola, knowing Jamie would be upset if the housework was delayed. After soothing Nicola and returning to my chores, Jamie complained, This crib is in the way taking up so much space, and kicked it. The crib shook, and Nicola woke up crying once again. What are you doing, Jamie? I questioned. Shut up. It's your fault for putting such a big thing here. She snapped back. But you were the one who told us to move the bed to the living room because it's noisy when she cries in our room at night. I reminded her. Are you complaining to me now? Stop arguing and soothe that noisy child, she ordered. Calling her that noisy child is really unkind. I had no choice but to carry out my chores while holding Nicola. Balancing housework and childcare without upsetting Jamie was incredibly challenging, and I was becoming increasingly exhausted. If I focused too much on childcare, I'd be scolded for being slow with housework, and if I prioritized chores, I'd be criticized for not parenting properly. Miles had been away on a business trip for about two months and wasn't home to support me. I tried reaching out to him through WhatsApp and phone calls, but he was always busy and couldn't talk for long. He apologized many times, saying, I'm really sorry for the tough times, but I felt guilty for making him apologize when he was working so hard for our family. At the hospital, the doctor examined Nicola and reassured me that while her face was red, there were no signs of bruises or injuries, which eased my worries. I felt a wave of relief wash over me. What happened? Did you accidentally drop her? The doctor inquired. I recounted the incident to the doctor. Just then, Layla walked into the room. Candif, is Nicola all right? She asked with concern. Oh, Leela! I exclaimed. In my frantic state, I had called Leela while in the ambulance. With Miles away on a business trip and unable to rush back immediately, I reached out to Leela despite it being the middle of the night. Leela proceeded to inform the doctor about Jamie's actions towards Nicola. The doctor was visibly shocked, and Leela trembled with anger. The next day, I returned home with Leela. After some hesitation, I entered the house alone. Jamie acted as if nothing had happened and continued to harass me as usual. You're late. Hurry up and make breakfast? She demanded. You forgot to take out the trash because you came home late. You really can't keep up with the housework, she criticized. Enough already. Did you forget what happened yesterday? You hit a three-month-old baby, remember? I confronted Jamie, her face flushed with anger. Why should I apologize? That child was the one being noisy. I just slapped her because she wouldn't listen. It's a form of discipline. I thought she wouldn't quiet down otherwise. Jamie defended herself. That's not discipline. It's violence. Enough. 
She's just a baby. Just do your chores already. I responded, feeling exasperated. You don't seem to regret it at all. You don't even think you did anything wrong. Leela, please come in. I called out to Leela. She entered the living room, and I couldn't believe what had happened. Mom, what were you thinking? I can't believe you would do something like that. Leela explained. No, that's, um. Jamie was flustered by Leela's sudden intervention. Mom, you do realize that what you did is legally punishable, right? Jamie's face paled at Leela's words. Leela, you're not seriously considering suing your own mother, are you? She pleaded. I won't be the one suing. Candiff will. I'll simply act as her lawyer, Lila responded firmly. But wait, it was just a form of discipline, Jamie tried to justify. Who would see hitting a baby as discipline? This is assault. I interjected, firm in my stance. No matter how hard Jamie tried to rationalize her actions, they could never be excused. I will definitely pursue legal action against you. Be prepared, I informed Jamie. Jamie began to cry softly. I'm sorry, Candiff. I always lose control when I'm angry and end up regretting it later. I've always felt guilty about how I treated you and Nina. I truly am sorry for what happened. Why did I raise my hand to her? I always wanted a boy as the eldest grandchild. It was Willis's wish, too. It might be an old-fashioned idea, but we always hoped for a boy to carry on the family line. And when a girl was born instead, I was happy about having a granddaughter, but also felt like I failed to fulfill a promise to Willis. Every time I got angry, I couldn't control myself. I'm truly sorry. Jamie confessed through her tears. Please, Candiff, help me change. I'll do anything, Jamie pleaded, offering a heartful apology. Jamie, please try to calm down. Let's have a proper conversation, I urged, hoping to diffuse the tension. No, I've done something unforgivable. No amount of apologies will ever be enough. Jamie continued to apologize fervently. My heart wavered, and I almost forgave her. But then Leela intervened. Don't be fooled, Candiff. Mom always puts on this act of deep remorse when she's caught in a corner just to escape criticism, Leela explained. What? She did the same thing when Dad found out about her affair. He fell for her act and forgave her but her tears dried up immediately afterward. This is probably just another performance, right? You can't fool me, Lila declared, causing Jamie to falter. What are you implying, Lila? Upon closer inspection, Jamie's tears, which had been flowing moments ago, had already ceased. It was likely fake crying. Jamie, I can't forgive you anymore. How twisted must you be to try to worm your way out of what you've done? I exclaimed, Wait a minute. I'm not trying to escape anything. Jamie protested. Okay, okay, I understand. But we've already decided to take legal action, I stated firmly. Jamie's face reddened with anger. Don't play games with me. Why should I be subjected to this treatment by a daughter-in-law like you? How dare you? Just then, we heard the sound of the house key turning. Candiff, is Nicola safe? It was Miles. Why are you here? I exclaimed in surprise. I had only contacted him on WhatsApp and thought he couldn't come because he was on a business trip. I had called him several times in the middle of the night. Yet here he was, having driven straight here since 3 o'clock a.m. and arriving this morning. I didn't expect Miles to be there too. Mom, stop it. I've heard about your mistreatment of Candiff, and I've warned you about it multiple times, haven't I? And now you've gone and hurt my precious Nicola. I can't forgive you for this, Mom, Miles said firmly. Are you blaming me too? How cruel. After all I did raising you and Leela, Jamie retorted defensively. What are you talking about? You were hardly ever there for us. It was always Aunt who took care of us. Our memories are filled with the meals Aunt cooked. Not you, Mom, Miles replied, his tone tinged with frustration. Just stop it. Plus... I think the doctor already reported it yesterday, Miles added. Ha. Huh. The hospital knows mom hurt her, so it's only a matter of time before the police get involved. Lila chimed in. No, wait. Are you okay with your mother getting arrested? Jamie pleaded, panic evident in her voice. 
I'd rather not have someone who hurts a three-month-old baby around, no matter what you say, Mom. You don't have anyone on your side now, Miles stated firmly. Jamie finally seemed to grasp the severity of her situation. Her face drained of color as she slumped in defeat. Soon after, the police arrived, and Jamie was taken into custody. As a first-time offender, she received a suspended sentence. However, Miles and Leela decided to cut ties with her and obtained restraining orders against her. Miles moved out of the in-law's house with me and Nicola and rented an apartment. During our search for a new place, we temporarily stayed with Leela, which was immensely helpful. Candif, I'm truly sorry for everything. I'll take parental leave if necessary. I'll switch departments or even jobs to ensure your and Nicola's safety. Miles assured me. His current workplace had some issues with its environment, making it challenging for him to secure parental leave. Consequently, he resigned and found employment elsewhere. Now he returns home on time and actively helps with Nicola and household chores. We reside in a high-rise near Leela's family, often gathering for meals or enjoying barbecues together. As for Jamie, I'm not sure about her current situation. But according to neighbors, she has become completely isolated since her arrest and rarely ventures outside. It seems that her prideful nature cannot handle being associated with such reprehensible actions. However, her whereabouts no longer concern me, and since she doesn't know our new address, the chances of encountering her unexpectedly are slim. My focus now is on living happily and supporting each other as a family with Miles, Nicola, and Leela's family.